Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Eternal Spring. I'm Paul Throt, and I am here, as always, with my wife, Stephanie. Hello. Hello, everybody. Also a cat, apparently, in the bed. That's One funny. cat. Um, <laughs> so we wanted to continue our series of our favorite places. Uh, this time, we'll be looking at Centro, which is, uh, as its name suggests, the center of the city. But first, uh, we have some quick news about our next trip. Yes, we have our next trip coming up tomorrow. We'll be leaving the house about 24 hours from now. So we <laughs> head out on October 13th and we'll be there for about uh, three and a half weeks coming back on November 7th. So we're looking forward to hitting a lot of our favorite spots while we're there. <laughs> that's true. But probably not Centro because it's going to be Day of the Dead and that is the exact wrong time to go to Centro. <laughs> so. I mean, you know, a million people would disagree. But... Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've done it before and I'm not sure I'll do it again, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought we could start with some restaurants and bars. Centro is this place where everyone who comes to Mexico City once will go. It is literally the center of the city. Um, by literally, I mean, maybe not geographically, but it is the center of everything. And it's where a lot of the great kind of tourist sites are, uh, but also lots of great restaurants and other places. Mm -hmm. So um my favorite by far is Taqueria Los Cocoyos. This was a near religious experience for me. This is very famous. It's it's on all the travel shows. It's on all the YouTube you know, uh, videos and all that kind of stuff. It's an iconic street side taco stand. And, and literally, it's a hole in a wall. And the guy sits in there. It's an area that's not any bigger than what I'm in now. They have to get that gigantic um cooking surface where they've got the meats of different kinds all boiling in their own juices and everything um they cut up everything uh, to order and they mix it with a bunch of ingredients uh to your to your preference and um you know for those who are not adventurous they have kind of safe options like suadero which could be beef or um pork or some combination of that kind of your basic taco uh like longaniza yeah right uh, the chorizo, right? That kind of thing. But if you want to really go for it, I mean, you can get anything there, including combinations of things. And I mean, uh, head meat, which is uh, all from all over the head, brains, eyes, uh, cheeks, tongue, whatever you need. So I've actually had most of that. I'm kind of, I am kind of adventurous, not the eyes, not really interested in that, but uh, uh, the guys there are great. They're, they're cool for photos and all that kind of stuff. They know that's half the reason you're there. Um <laughs> And they have those cute little plastic bucket seats. You can, you sit out on the street, right? You don't, uh, or stand up and just eat with a plate. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's perfection. Mm -hmm. And you can go fairly early, which is kind of nice if you, because it does get busy sometimes. And if you don't want to be there when yeah. it's crowded. You could uh, almost have breakfast. I think we did, in fact, maybe did, yes. even the first time we went mm -hmm. or one of yep. the first times. Um, so yeah, good choice. Um Another, a little bit different type of restaurant in Centro is called uh, Cafe de Tacuba. It's an authentic Mexican restaurant, and mm. it's um, it's just an interesting place to go because it's been family run and owned for uh, over 100 years. Um, the building that it's in, you know, the interior is decorated really nice. It's a nice place to be. Um, mm -hmm. The waitresses have these kind of old fashioned uniforms that look like nurses uniforms from like the 50s and 60s which is kind yeah, of fun and um a pretty broad menu with a lot of traditional mexican type foods um you'll find meat fish snacks all kinds of moles tortas tamales kind of the yeah. the range of mexican food and um definitely more of a you know sit down service kind of place compared to yeah. the taco stands yeah all indoors uh beautiful building uh be beautiful inside extensive menu anyone could find something to eat there it's mm -hmm. yeah it's yep. pretty incredible yeah um this one's a little harder to find especially if you're looking for it on a map but uh north of centro north of the zocalo which is uh, the center of centro if you will is a plaza called plaza de santo domingo which we'll talk about in a little bit and on one of its borders uh, or edges is a boutique hotel called santo no i'm sorry called domingo santo and they have a rooftop bar, restaurant, terrazza kind of thing. Um, so you have to, have to actually go into the hotel to go up in the elevator to this place. It's fantastic. And this is a place we've been to multiple times. We've had breakfast there. We've had dinner. Uh, the cocktails are out of this world. Uh, and it's got this beautiful view of that plaza, mm -hmm. which is also beautiful. <laughs> and it's a neat place to be when the sun goes down. 
Um, and it's just a little enough off the beaten path uh, that you might escape some of the tourism stuff. And, uh, you know, a couple of blocks north of where the everyone's going to be. Mm -hmm. So it could be a nice little oasis, too, um, if you're having a big, busy day with, with surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really kind of a, a calm, quiet, like nice place yeah. to spend a little bit of time. Yep. Um, back in Centro at the Zocalo is um, another place called Terrassa Grand Hotel. Um, this is a rooftop bar that overlooks the Zocalo, so it's really beautiful. Um, the building is really pretty. Um, it's a famous hotel that was featured in the James Bond movie where they opened mm -hmm. the whole scene in Mexico City. So you'll see, you know, if you watch the beginning of that movie, you'll see the shots of right, um, the whole area. Yeah. The whole, you know, the whole area. Um, it can be a little bit hard to get into, um, probably because it overlooks the Zocalo and it gets really busy. Yeah. Um yeah. Um, but you can get, you know, if you can get in there, the cocktails are fantastic, um, decent food. Yep. If you're there at probably 6 p.m. or sunset, you can watch them take down the big flag that we have, mm -hmm. they have in the Zocalo. So um, yep. definitely a place to try. And if you can get in, great. We often get in, but we don't always get in. Yeah, it's strange. Sometimes you get stopped at the door and it's like, can't, can't do it, <laughs> you know, today, whatever, <laughs> but it's worth trying. And the inside of the hotel is a glass, stained glass roof, which is iconic and beautiful. And you'll immediately mm -hmm. recognize it probably. Mm -hmm. uh, really neat place. Um, if you can't get in there, as it turns out right next door, there's a place called Premier Quadro, I guess. And uh, this is a less expensive, not that it's inexpensive, but a less expensive alternative to the Grand Hotel. So it's next door to the hotel. It's up on the roof again. So you get the, all the views of the of, of um, uh, Zocalo. Um, great food, great drinks. This is the place where we recorded the video of the man serenaded Stephanie, uh, serenading Stephanie back in the day. Um, it's more of a, it's kind of a meaty, a meat kind of a place, like lots of steaks and things like that. Um, lots of meat dishes. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little hard to find, but they will find you because um, on the ground floor, it's little shops like um, jewelry shops and watches and things like that. But there'll be guys trying to out there because it's really hard to get to find the entrance. It's inside between all those shops. So they're out there trying to pull people in, which makes it seem like touristy and terrible. But honestly, it's a neat place. And they also often have entertainment inside, not just the guy. Well, I guess it was the same kind of guy. So sometimes they'll be on a stage. And then some that particular guy, we've seen a couple of different entertainers. Um, that was the one guy we've seen who actually walked around and sang to the people at the tables, which was kind of fun. But mm -hmm. um, definitely try Terrazzo Grand Hotel first. But I, this is not horrible by any means. It's actually very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice place. Um, and then in the same area, but a little bit further, you know, kind of around the corner, mm -hmm. um, a block north of the cathedral is another place called La Casa de las Sarinas. Um so it's a Mexican restaurant, historic building. Um, you can eat up on the rooftop. It's a little bit fancy, like yeah. these places all tend to be um, there. Um, but they have great cocktails, great food. Um, not quite the same view of the Zocalo as you get from the other places, but right. still a cool place to go up and eat or have a drink on on the rooftop. Yeah. And it's worth just going back. You should, uh, we'll talk about Zocalo a little bit, but everyone who goes should go around the cathedral in full. And uh, this is a view of the back of the cathedral with Zocalo kind of behind it. Um, but nearby, there's some interesting things. Those little passageways that go through the buildings with shops and um, things like that. So it's it, it's still, whether you go to this restaurant or not, or you end up here because the other ones were full or whatever, um, you'll you'll go buy it probably. And it's it's worth knowing about. It's, it, it is a really nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. you can, I think you can, you can also sit outside in the front, right? I mean, they have a, yeah, a whole think, range yeah. of seats. We've mm -hmm. always gone to the roof because it's, yeah. you know, yeah. we love rooftop mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Um, there's one major walk in this area of town. Uh, it is the Avenida Francisco I Madero. And this is, it runs east-west or west-east, depending on which way you go, from uh, Bellas Artes, which we'll talk about in a future video, um, to the Zocalo. And it is a, it is a shut off to traffic, although streets cross it, so sometimes you have to stop. But as far as the street itself is completely pedestrian, it's always full of people. We've made a video about it. It's It's famous. Um, it, lots and lots of restaurants and shops up and down, up and down. Uh, it's, that's what it's all about. And at the far, well, not the far Western end, but near the far Western end is a, another famous building, the Casa de los Azuelos. And this is the house of tiles. Uh, it's blue Lisbon, 
uh, Portugal style tiles on the outside. So it's kind of uniquely recognizable. And inside there's a uh, shops, but in the very middle, is a, an old fashioned kind of restaurant that's, uh, I don't know if it's open at the Sky or not actually off the top of my head, but it's open, you know, it goes up a few floors at least. And it's kind of a traditional style of thing from back in the day. Uh, but it's still a fantastic restaurant. We're told because we've actually never eaten there, but we've been in there a bunch of times. Um, it's worth just checking in, but there's other things right up and down that uh, in, in very, I think across from the uh, house of tiles is a little uh, kind of an art gallery type yeah, thing like a sculpture and, uh, museum uh, yeah, it seems to change pretty frequently it's not yeah. just the same thing all the time yeah i mean it turns into kfc's and burger kings as you go but it's you know yeah. the beginning of it's pretty cool and and just the whole street is beautiful of course as you go down you've got that zocalo waiting for you at the end so it's kind of a neat walk mm -hmm. either way yeah 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 that's that's a cool walk um and then another um site to see in to the area is the Latin Tower, Mira Torre Latino. Mm -hmm. um, it's an iconic building. You can see it from, you know, I would, can't, would not say everywhere in Mexico City, but it's. You can see it from our know, apartment, which is pretty apartment. far away, actually. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you can, if you have a view to the sky, you can see it from all over the place. It's just this, you yeah. know, skyscraper that stands off by itself. Um, and you can take an elevator up to the top and, you know, walk around and get the views of the city. Um, and yes, of course, it's a touristy kind of thing to do, but it's also yeah. a really cool thing to do. So, um, yep. you know, this is something we've always done with the kids mm -hmm. or otherwise, you know, you find the tallest place and go to the top of it, take in the views. It's beautiful. It looks down exactly. on Bellas Artes, right? That place we'll talk about again later. Yep. Um, it's gorgeous. It looks weird from the outside a little bit. It looks old fashioned. It kind of reminds me of, um, uh, some of the older buildings in Boston, you know, the uh, older skyscrapers, I mean, not the historic older buildings, but, um, but it's modern on the inside enough. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it seems safe. I, I would not <laughs> want to be inside there during an earthquake, but, uh, but the views are incredible. So. Yeah. And you could even go in the day and go another time mm -hmm. at night, just because it would be, you know, so cool to see the city right in, in the daytime and the nighttime. Yeah. It's a great place to watch the traffic too, um, without having to deal with it. <laughs> You know. be glad you're not in it <laughs> yeah exactly uh and then another uh interesting site we, we sort of referenced earlier is the plaza de santo domingo and this again is that square that's a little nor a little bit north of zocalo uh maybe a couple blocks um it's a it's a cute little place it's got a church on the north end it's got markets at various times i don't know the exact schedule obviously but sometimes it will be empty full of people but just empty of things sometimes it's full with tents and whatever setups they have for the markets and that's kind of fun and then, of course, our one of our favorite restaurant bars um, is right there um, in that little boutique hotel. So it's it's uh, like we said earlier, kind of a a little respite from the busyness of the the, the Zocalo. If you mm -hmm. if you need to get away for a little bit, it's kind of a neat little place. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, so we've talked about a lot of the restaurants around the Zocalo, but Zocalo itself is yeah. probably the most famous spot in all of Mexico City. Um, it's mm -hmm. a really big square. One thing that kind of struck me when the first time I saw it is, you know, you have the kind of an idea of what a sit center city square is like. And yeah. this is like a square on steroids. Like it's much <laughs> bigger than. <laughs> it's literally an empty city block. Yeah. It, it's amazing how big it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it's surrounded by um, beautiful buildings. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, archway walkways around the side of it with sometimes vendors selling right. um, different things and um, like I mentioned talking about the um, Grand Hotel the, there's a huge huge Mexican flag in the center of it and they have a ceremony every evening where they you know some military folks come out and yeah. take it down and fold it up ceremoniously and I mean it takes I don't know a dozen and 20 people to right. fold it and carry it because it's so big <laughs> yeah it's humongous um, and it's a place you'll find a lot of events from, you know, we just come, we would stumble across like a, you know, an indigenous market one time, or they'll have yeah. concerts there that'll be all yeah. um, decorated for Christmas. It's There was a, a traveling museum there from, mm -hmm. I don't remember where it was from, something famous, like something like, not the Louvre, but something like that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, uh, you know, outdoors, uh, well, set up in a tent type structure, mm -hmm. but. It's such a big space. It's amazing. It's worth going again and again. 
uh, different times of day and night, different times of the year. You know, it's beautiful mm -hmm. at Christmas um, or during the holidays. Mm -hmm. They really decorate it. Um, yeah, you never know what you're going to see there. It's one of those things you'll go randomly at some point and there'll be something there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's a neat Or place. there won't. And you'll just or there won't. be able to walk <laughs> yeah. across the whole thing. Right. And right, people right. will be out there walking with their families and mm -hmm. selling toys to kids. And, yeah, you know, that'll be what's going on. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then one of the centerpieces of this square is a set of cathedrals on the north end. And, and this is one of those kind of good, bad things and not just for my pronunciation. Um, the Cathedral uh, Metropolitana de la Ciudad de México, the Mexico City uh, Metropolitan Cathedral is the big one. And then next door is, is a, the Parroquia de la Ascensión, um, which is the small one. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, when the Spanish came to Mexico and uh, destroyed the Aztecs and their civilization, they took the remains of Templo Mayor, which is the big um, uh, temple that the Aztecs had, destroyed it and used those rocks and bricks and things to build these cathedrals um the big cathedral is the one for the was the one for the spanish the little cathedral was the one for the locals it was the way it was you know normally or mm -hmm. originally set up so that's not great um this place it's worth seeing though and they're both worth seeing this is the most catholic thing i've ever seen in my life and we have been to the vatican <laughs> and it is uh it is a unique aspect of uh, mexico history i think that these people were conquered embraced this religion got their independence and then kept their religion, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and they are uh, as a society are incredibly Catholic. I mean, they're, they might be the most Catholic nation on earth. I, I wouldn't be surprised to discover they're the biggest Catholic nation on earth, but mm -hmm. you can see it all in these churches. It's, um, it's rather, it's in some ways it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's uh, a little over the top. Um, the cathedral itself is beautiful. Uh, the Prochia is beautiful in its own way as well, but this, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, things in glass cases and, you know, little decorations. Yeah. It's very, mm -hmm. it's a little strange to me, but it's, uh, it's absolutely worth seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the top sites in the city. Yeah. For sure. Um, and then, um, kind of alongside, I guess, alongside the, um, the smaller cathedral mm -hmm. is, That's right. um, what's called, um, Plaza Manuel Camillo. And mm -hmm. these are, um, indigenous performers so you'll see people dressed up in kind of traditional um, clothing from their cultures and they sing and dance and um, they'll always be you know they they perform quite frequently and you'll see them you know you'll see people um you know watching and i think you know, if bless, you, bless you with incense and do things like yes, that yes right they can cleanse you with their yeah. incense um there's also um the Aztec Museum back there mm -hmm. in the same area. Um, um, and you have to, you can see kind of the edges of it from the outside and then right. you pay, you can pay and you can kind of walk all the way through on the inside, right. um, which we have Yeah, this is the ruins done. of the Templo Mayor. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You can see the kind of corners and base of it basically. Yeah, yeah. On several of our trips, it was closed because of COVID, but it's open mm -hmm. now. So um, we just haven't had a chance to go through. Um, and one thing you should know about this area is when these when the dancers are not dancing and singing, they're kind of milling around and um, they may ask you if you want to take a photo with them, which you can, but just be, you know, be ready to give them a tip. This isn't, you know, a public yeah, service on their part. They'd like maybe, you know, right. be ready pesos, to pay uh, or pesos. for them to come ask you to pay if you're just taking photos, you're not even with them. Right. They don't like yes. you to take pictures of them, you know, just off to the side. Right. Mm -hmm. it's it is it's touristy i mean there's no doubt about that but it's also necessary right and it's part of that walk that everyone should do all the way around the cathedral there's beautiful cactuses and areas of gardens and things mm -hmm. as well yep. um but it's worth checking out that whole area including this part of it yes right um and then it's you know it's centro so there's a couple of museums i mean two really stand out um and the first is uh, called palacio postal postal i guess excuse me uh, post, which is a, it actually is a working post office. So it's technically a postal palace <laughs> and which will make sense when you walk inside it, because it is amazing. It's probably the most beautiful post office in the world. Certainly the best one I've seen. Um, there's also a little museum bit to it uh, off to the left, but you can walk and you can conduct your post office business. If you have such a thing, uh, it is a working post office, but you walk through the middle and you can see just the incredible, almost MC Escher 
design of the interior with the the walkways and stairways and all that kind of stuff. It's it's a really neat place. You'll want to take a, a ton of pictures. It's free, you know, like most of the mm -hmm. stuff we talked about here. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely worth seeing. It's across the street from uh, Bellas Artes, which we're going to talk about actually in the next video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really the it's um, remarkably ornate. It's really yeah. impressive that this mm -hmm. much care and attention would go into building a post office and and then worth seeing. Um, right. And then alongside the one one full side of the Socolo is the um, Palacio Nacional or the National Palace, um, which has been closed quite a bit when we've been there. It's or been closed, closed to us forever. forever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this trip we'll get in, right. but um, bring your passports because if you get lucky and you can get in, you do need your passport to get in. Um, mm -hmm. We've been there when they've been taking reservations for future dates. So if it's on your list of things you want to see when you're in Mexico City, go by there First. early in your trip yeah. and see if you can get tickets for a later day in your trip. Um, and But there are um, Diego Rivera murals inside. Like really famous, humongous, th and which is why it's on this list, even though we've not been, right? How do you know this is a favorite place? Uh, if you see the pictures of these murals, you'll understand it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a place mm -hmm. I would like to get in. Um, it's also the place where um, the president of Mexico rings a bell on Mexican Independence Day and the Zocalo is full of people and they all, you know, cheer Viva Mexico, Viva yep. Mexico and um, and celebrate independence. So that's An another day. I do not want to be in Zocalo because it is literally no. packed left it to right, is. top to bottom and people. <laughs> yeah. um, but it looks amazing in videos. Uh, so, yes. yeah. So uh, Centro is such a big area and there's so much there and we've spent so much time there because before we bought the place and even through the purchase process, we stayed a lot in Centro. So we had to divide the area up into two parts. So this is the first part. Uh, this is what I think of Centro proper, but west of this area is a place called Alameda Central, which we will do separately. And that goes all the way from that tower that Stephanie mentioned and Bellas Artes, which we'll be talking about uh, all the way west to something called the Monument of the Revolution, which is amazing. Um, as well. Um, and that's a whole neat area that has its own walks. And uh, there's a couple of markets that are fantastic in that area, great restaurants, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so anyone you know who comes to Mexico City for the first time and stays in Centro is going to be in good shape, even if they don't travel to Roma Norte or, Los, or Coyoacan or any, you know, Polanco or whatever. Um, j just staying in this area. I mean, there's so mm -hmm. much to do. It's a, it's a big yeah. area and it's full of neat stuff and it's beautiful to look at and uh, yeah, I would say if you were staying three, four, five days, especially depending on how interested you are in art and how long you want to spend right. in some of the more artistic places, like you could spend that much time in Mexico City and easily never leave Centro and not yep. run out and of just things walk to see and to do. everywhere from your hotel. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. So we'll do that video soon. I will do that video in Mexico City, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, so if everything goes well, like she said, we'll be flying tomorrow and Friday. Um, what is it? No, nope. October 13th. Oh yes. Friday the 13th, of course. Um, so hopefully we'll be there soon. In the meantime, uh, thank you for watching and uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you. Bye.